Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we're taking a look at a 5-color Enigmatic Incarnation plus Fires of Invention Enchantment Toolbox deck. You may have noticed we're also playing with Yorion as our companion. Makes a lot of sense in a toolbox deck because we get to play with more cards in the main deck, so we have more tutor targets with our Enigmatic Incarnation. Plus a lot of our permanents also provide great value when they enter the battlefield, so both our enchantments and our creatures are great to flicker with Yorion to provide more of an advantage. And then, of course, our key card is Enigmatic Incarnation. The 4-man enchantment says at the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice another enchantment. If you do, search your library for a creature card with mana value equal to 1 plus the sacrifice enchantment's mana value and put it straight onto the battlefield. And as you can see, we've got a ton of enchantments at 2 mana, we've got a few at 3, a few at 4, and then even some 6 mana enchantments with our 4 copies of a Leyline Binding, which we can cast at a discount thanks to Domain, if we control various basic land types. And between all the trial lands and shock lands, we've got a ton of basic land types to enable a Leyline Binding, so we can potentially cast it for just a single white mana. And it also has a great synergy with Nylea's Presence, which was a recent addition in the Explorer Anthology expansion, a 2 mana enchantment or enchanting a land, it draws a card when it enters, so nice to flicker with Yorion later in the game, and the enchanted land is every basic land type in addition to its other types, so in addition to fixing our mana, which is helpful in a 5 color deck, it also means we have all 5 land types in play for Leyline Binding, so we can always cast it for a single white mana, but regardless of how cheap Binding is, it will still count as a 6 mana enchantment if we sacrifice it with Enigmatic Incarnation, which means we can potentially get a 7 drop like Agent of Treachery, to steal an opposing permanent when it enters, as well as a Titan of Industry to maybe make a Rhino gain some life or take out an artifact or enchantment, and then we can later still flicker them with Yorion if we feel like it, so that's incredibly powerful and can happen as early as turn 4 since we can already cast a 1 or 2 mana binding early on in the game, and then on turn 4 play Incarnation, get our 7 drop, and that's sometimes too much for the opponent to handle. And then another great card to go alongside Incarnation is Fires of Invention, which allows us to cast two spells for free each turn, but we can only cast spells during our turn. So on turn 4 we can play Fires of Invention, followed by Incarnation in the best case scenario, and then we can already maybe sacrifice an enchantment we had in play, or even sacrifice the Fires of Invention itself if we want to get a 5 mana creature. But it really starts going off once we get to untap with Fires of Invention, put our companion in hand for 3 mana, and then we can still cast two spells for free, including the Yurion that we just put in our hand so we can start flickering stuff and completely bury the opponent in card advantage. And a great creature to search up once we have a Fires of Invention plus Incarnation in play is Kenrith the Returned King, since we can sink all our extra mana into his various activated abilities, which can give the team Trample and Haste until end of turn, can put plus one counters on our creatures, gain five life for just two and a white, can draw extra cards, and even reanimate some creatures. So Kenrith does it all and is great to search up once we have that Fires of Invention allowing us to sink all our mana into it. Then we've got some other goodies such as Elder Gergroth, which is another great creature to help us stabilize against aggressive decks by gaining life and maybe drawing extra cards. And then we also have a Yorion in the main deck, so we can maybe search that up and flicker a bunch of our permanents. We've got the highest density of enchantments at 2 mana, so we also have a lot of 3 mana creatures to maybe search up with Enigmatic Incarnation, including a one of Moonblast Cleric, which can search for an enchantment and put it on top of our deck, so that can help us find maybe a Fires of Invention if we don't have one already. We've got Skyclave Apparition, as well as Deputy of Detention as removal spells, which can deal with opposing permanents when they enter. We've got Glasspool Mimic to maybe copy a creature that's already in play. Blood Mage offers a bit of a graveyard hate, which can be useful against a Grease Fang, Parhelion, and combo decks of the format. And then we also have a Gloom Shrieker to get anything back from our graveyard. Also counts as an enchantment itself, so we can still sacrifice it to get a 4 mana creature potentially. And then Knight of Autumn, another answer to artifacts or enchantments, can also gain life in a pinch. And then at 4 mana we've got a few creatures as well, since we don't have as many 3 mana enchantments to sacrifice as we have 2 mana ones. So we've got Siege Rhino as a 4-5 Trampler that will drain the opponent for 3 while gaining 3 for us. And then we also have an Archon of Sun's Grace to search up, a 3-4 flying a lifelink, saying Pegasus creatures we control have lifelink, and whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under our control we get to make a 2-2 Pegasus creature token with flying, which will then also have lifelink for as long as we control Archon of Sun's Grace. So especially powerful alongside Yorion, if 
we end up flickering a bunch of our enchantments that can enable constellation a few times to make a ton of pegasus tokens and those are all the creatures we can search up we also have a two mana creature with spirited companion but no one mana enchantments in the deck so we won't be able to search this up but still a nice play early that we can maybe later sacrifice with our enigmatic incarnation to get a three mana creature also great to flicker with yorion and gives us a one one that can help us attack and block where needed then we've got four copies of omen of the sea which we can flash in to scry two and then draw a card can also be sacrificed to scry two although for the most part we want to keep it in play to later flicker with yorion and get more value and then we also have omen of the forge which will deal two damage to any target when it enters and functions the same way as omen of the sea otherwise and then another recent addition is bitter reunion from the brothers war when it enters we may discard a card if we do draw two so it can help us smooth out our draw early on which is important in a five color deck especially when it comes to the mana base and then for one mana we can sacrifice it to give our creatures haste until end of turn so that can be especially powerful with something like a fable of the mirror breaker can maybe give an elder gargroth haste can also be great with a titan of industry later in the game so it has a bit of utility there and of course also great to flicker with yorion as we'll get to draw a bunch more cards and then at three mana we're also playing the full set of fable of the mirror breaker which will help us smooth out our draws with a second chapter by discarding and drawing the shaman can also fix our mana by making treasure tokens and if we flicker the saga we make an additional shaman token so that's nice and eventually the reflection of kiki jiki also has a ton of synergy throughout the deck since so many of our creatures have nice enter the battlefield abilities and giving both the shaman or reflection haste with bitter reunion is also an interaction that can come up and then the mana base includes one of each of the triomes to maximize the number of basic land types for an early leyline binding then i've got a few shock lands and then the check lands also make a lot of sense since they will often come into play untapped thanks to all those basic land types in the mana base and they also work quite nicely with nylea's presence no black dual lands as you can see since we're just splashing black for some tutor targets not planning to cast these very often but of course we are capable of doing so especially with presence fixing our mana so yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's not perfect, but we can cast Omen and Companion. And then we already get a nice discount on Binding for interaction. So I'll try it. And then Fortress comes into play untapped since we control a planes. Opponent on the red aggro. Okay, so we could either Omen or Companion. Going for Companion to get an extra blocker is fine. And then next turn by playing Garden, we can play very cheap a Leyline Binding already. There's a Robber with an extra counter. Exiles Fable, so that's a pretty nice hit for the opponents. I wouldn't mind exiling robber and uh, play a tap land in the process. Don't think it matters too much which one. And then we'll pass. Opponent moves to combats and we'll binding the robber before they get a chance to attack with it. And then can probably afford to take two. Next turn could already play a Siege Rhino. And then if we draw an untap land, Yorion to Flicker, Companion and Rhino would be pretty fun. Never mind, Ferocidon shuts down the life gain. So now Rhino doesn't look as promising. Yeah, we could play an Omen to go digging. Or we could just play a Siege Rhino and be satisfied with a 4-5 blocker. And pass it back. Can double block Frostodon for the time being. Would have been fun to copy Rhino with the Glass Pool Mimic as well. So Frostodon putting in a ton of work here. Bowden plays another Kumano. And passes back Omen. A little bit short of killing Frostodon. So for now maybe go tap lands and then play both Omens at instant speed. Could also decide to play Yorion Flicker Binding to exile the Ferocidon. 
And then when Siege Rhino comes back, we'll actually gain life. Opponent stomps our face. Down to 10. And play with fire also going upstairs. So not trying to kill Companion to attack with Ferocidon. Maybe if they have other planes. Could still potentially draw into another binding with Omen. Bone Crusher 5 4. Okay, let's play the blue omen first, in case we find another binding. And then omen can take out etching. Alright, there's another binding and a fires of invention. So let's say I grab the binding now, just get rid of Ferocidon, and then next turn go fires plus Yurion, that seems decent. We get to flicker Siege Rhino. And gain three more life, and then Mimic afterwards can also copy it once again. Don't think I'm interested in attacking. Even though there is a chance your opponent would just take it if I attacked with uh, Rhino here. And then do I want to flicker the Leyline Binding with Robber of the Rich underneath? Try and get rid of Bone Crusher Giant instead? Yeah, that might be fine. And then I'll hang on to Mimic as a creature instead of a land. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and it's not amazing, but uh, we get to see a couple new cards with Reunion. We have some early interaction, so I'll try it. And then what land to play first? Maybe a Breeding Pool. And then Sulphur Falls untapped. Can cast our Reunion. Mystic, I'm happy to kill. And Binding's not a bad draw. Do I want to shock myself so I reduce the cost of Binding? Sacred Foundry already gives us all the missing types, so I don't think that's necessary right now. Turn to Haven, so our opponent on a green devotion strategy. And uh, yeah, I'll hang on to Binding for bigger and scarier things. And for now, play Companion, since I don't have anything I actively want to discard with Reunion yet. Okay, that's the double green we need to cast Gergroth. So next turn, maybe Reunion and Binding. Would love to find Fires of Invention or Incarnation in the meantime. Could see Karn, could see Kiora into something else. It's gonna be Kiora. So three more mana, best case scenario for them, they have the troll to draw. And there it is. No Nykthos in play at least, and another binding was nice. So we can cast two of those now if we'd like, and then next turn Gergroth. Maybe it's actually Cura that we want to get rid of, since we can probably beat troll with Gergroth on the ground. And Cura generates plus two mana at the moment. And then wait on the second binding. If they play Nykthos, they still only have four devotions, so it's not a disaster. Opponent might have a Busage in hand to blow up binding. It's gonna be a Karn. Okay. Troll hits for four, we'll take it. And actually, I can exile Karn before they get a chance to activate it now. Which I don't mind. Okay, play Gergroth. And might as well hit for one. Opponent could go land into a Cavalier and still have decent blocks on Gergroth, otherwise it can run away with the game. Kiora, untap Haven, that's fine. Just an elf. Okay, so feels like we're in the driver's seat now. Don't have a great use for Nylia's presence. 
So I might prefer Bitter Reunion to give future creatures haste as well. Could put Yorion in hand. So we have a ton of options. Should probably start by attacking with Gergroth. And take it from there. Go after Kiora. And we'll draw. Finding another omen. Opponent happy to jump with a troll to get the enchantments. And then we want to dig for answers here. So Omen probably gives me the best chance of finding some. Okay, Incarnation and Knight. Knight can blow up their enchantment and then I'm happy to have Incarnation afterwards. And I'll go for the Troll enchantment, although both would be fine here. Opponent has a Cavalier. Does not find Nykthos, but does draw with Kira. Can still attack into it with Gargroth at least. Although her opponent has a second Troll. Alright, so yeah, if our opponent finds Nykthos, we could still be in trouble. And there it is, 9 Devotion. So what can we get with Incarnation? Can sacrifice Leyline Binding that has uh, Kiora underneath it to get a 7-drop, get Agent of Treachery and steal Nykthos. That's one way to do it. I could try and hit my land drop with Omen first, although I think just getting the Incarnation going is probably safest. And then I'll take the trade for Gergroth and Cavalier. Opponent can maybe get back another troll, which is fine. And we'll attack Kiora. And take it from there. Find another presence. Okay, opponent just jumping with a troll to keep Kiora alive. Get their enchantments. Could also steal Cavalier of Thorns with Agent of Treachery. Or even steal the Enchanted Forest here. So we have options, that's for sure. Do I take the risk of Omen first? I don't think it's worth it. And then end of turn, sacrifice Binding. And get Agent of Treachery, I think. And let's go after Nykthos. Seems like the most dangerous card. And then that also allows me to maybe play Omen if her opponent doesn't tap in a response, but they did. And then we can try and flicker Agent with Yorion later. Got plenty of chum blockers for Lair of the High Drive. That turns into their win condition. One drop ripples and grows. Probably see a Storm the Festival here. Sky Sovereign instead. Nice answer for Agent. So our opponent's playing it in the main deck. Can still gain access to Agent later. And Karn. Okay, let's see if they get some graveyard hate, perhaps, or what they're planning. Alright, opponent gets the Pestle and Cauldron, so they can cast Restorative Bursts and get some cards back from the graveyard. And Nykthos, I guess, has a bit of green devotion going for it. Five, six, seven, still one shy of playing Yorion and flickering stuff, which is really what we want here. And of turn I can sacrifice another binding to get Titan of Industry. So for now, I guess Nylea's presence. Which also adds to my green devotion. See if we can hit a land drop, another incarnation. I guess that's not terrible here. So let's say we add green devotion. I can play Presence and still play Incarnation afterwards. Found our land. So yeah, let's uh, go for Incarnation. And then Gargroth could attack. We we'll just trade for Sky Sovereign potentially. I think that's acceptable. And go after Kiora perhaps. 
over Karn since we're planning to sacrifice our six mana binding. I think I'm still interested in drawing. Okay, opponent is gonna trade for Sky Sovereign here. That's fine. Kira takes one. So now our Titan's a little bit less exciting. Could also get a Yorion for five mana by sacrificing Incarnation. So maybe I sacrifice Binding first, getting Titan, and then sacrifice Incarnation to get Yorion to flicker stuff. Yeah, don't hate that idea. So first get Titan of Industry. That can make a Rhino destroy an enchantment. And then we sacrifice Incarnation to get Yurion. And flicker everything that we can flicker, pretty much. Still have a Rhino and Yurion back on defense. And hopefully we don't take too much damage here. My my Opponent gets a Cityscape Leveler, okay. So may I go after Incarnation, although we have another one. Could just kill Yorion and then our opponent's on the beatdown plan. Not too scared of Leveler since we can destroy it in a multitude of ways. And then we can also get some Graveyard Hate to make their Restorative Burst to Wars. So I think we're doing okay here. No attacks. And now we get all our goodies back. And uh, now the us presence, enchant our lanes. A lot of triggers. Let's see, Omen can maybe go after Lenor Elves, as opposed to their Planeswalkers. Knight of Autumn can destroy Artifact or enchantments. Go after Haven. Titan can also destroy artifact or enchantments. Make another Rhino. And then we get a bunch of card draw as well. Can maybe still cast another Leyline Binding end of turn. Exile Cavalier. Okay, untap, there's a Leyline Binding, so that Exiles Cavalier. Are we close to just killing the opponent here, perhaps? Can still give the team haste with Reunion too. My Devotion 6 currently for green, so can activate this one. Play another Incarnation. And the yeah, our opponent has seen enough here. If this weren't already lethal, we could deal with the opponent's graveyard and completely take over. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is probably keepable. We have the untapped land on turn 2 to play a reunion if we need to keep digging. And Omen's also nice if we're up against a more aggressive deck. Veteran points towards a green-white life gain deck. So, yeah, let's uh, play Reunion. Gergroth could be decent since we can also maybe give it haste later. So I think one Fable can go, even though we could keep both to increase our odds of finding Incarnation, which is eventually the card that wins us the game. So fair enough. And then next turn Fable, probably don't need Blood Mage in this matchup. Voice of the Blessed would have been nice to Omen in response to the life gain trigger. So it looks like a white... Life gain deck as opposed to necessarily angels. So I'm still gonna stick to the plan here, play Fable. And then hopefully find Incarnation soon, since we can find plenty of answers to voice that way. Resplendent Angel, so I guess there's still enough angels in their deck. And there's Incarnation, perfect. 
So Blood Mage can go, and maybe a Triome at this point. And now we can even play Invention first. So take two, play Fires, play Incarnation for free. And then step one is probably to find some removal. Can sacrifice a reunion to get a three mana creature like maybe Deputy of Detention or we could get Skyclave Apparition. And then Resplendent Angels probably with a bigger threat at the moment. So yeah, Skyclave over Deputy seems fine. Opponent could have their own Skyclave Apparition to get rid of Incarnation, so we're not necessarily going to keep it forever. And then next turn, at the very least, we can play Omen to get another 3-mana removal creature. Voice attacks. Double block could work out. All their opponent may have some instant speed creatures they can generate. You never know, I'll take 4. Might also end up flickering Apparition next turn by just putting Yorion in hand and casting it for free. Uh -huh, the Book of Exalted Deeds. And Mutavolt does have all creature types, including Angel. So that's a combo. So probably a combo we want to break up here, given the chance. Can attack first, and then... If I sacrifice Fires, I don't need to worry about... Uh, not being able to cast spells during the opponent's turn, so we could maybe Omen kill Mutavolt in response to the opponent using Book, or we can just get rid of the Book instead. So yeah, the easier option is probably just Flicker Apparition, Exile the Book. We have a ton of options in terms of what other enchantment to sacrifice with Incarnation. But uh, yeah, we could also just sacrifice Fires of Invention to the Incarnation after having played a free Yorion and still have Omen of the Forge available, which I also don't hate. So play this for free. Flicker Reflection and Skyclave Apparition. Opponent gets a token. Grows Voice of the Blessed. And then when Apparition comes back, I think I just go for Voice of the Blessed. And let them set up their Mutavolt combo if they want to, since we have Omen as a potential answer. And then by sacrificing Fires, we can get a 5-drop. Like maybe Kenrith, or could even get another Yorion. So yeah, if you remember the Faceless Haven plus Book of Exalted Deeds combo in Standard, this is basically a cheaper version of that, thanks to Mutavolt. And Kenrith seems fine. Okay. I realized I could have also played Garden Tapped to enable fires on five lands, and then with the treasure we can still cast Omen. Opponent has a second Mutavolt. Don't think that really matters since they have to exile the book to enable it in the first place. So opponent animates Mutavolt and they're all in on this game plan of not losing the game. And an Omen's gonna seal the deal. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw and our hand has Fires and Incarnation, sadly no red mana, which we really need here for the sand to function, so we'll take a mulligan. This seems better. Still missing green mana for Incarnation, but we can cast Omen and Reunion to go digging, and then I guess Deputy is going to be easier to cast than Apparition, with only a single white source. If we're up against a red aggro, we could be in a bit of trouble since our hand's not particularly fast. Alright, so we have found our colors in the meantime, so I don't think I want to shock myself to play a 2-drop. We'll just uh, play our 2-drop on turn 3, and then we can play Incarnation on 4 without taking any damage and get a 3-drop out of our deck. And it uh, doesn't really matter which red source we play. 
Could of course always play Deputy next turn, and with double Robber in play, that might not be a bad idea. Although of course your opponent could have removal for Deputy, even two damage is enough with a Firebrand. And then our opponent gets their two Robbers back. And then I wouldn't have an enchantment in play to go with Incarnation. So now I could also go for Fable. That gives me a 3 mana enchantment to sacrifice and maybe get a Siege Rhino or Archon on the following turn, which can gain us some more life back and take it from there. Although I mentioned they can kill the Shaman token, we're going to take at least another 5. I think that's still overall preferable over playing Deputy and having our opponent remove it. Torbrain could be painful too here, Ember Cleave. There's a few good ones. Opponent attacks. So do we think Ember Cleave? Think I'm still okay if they run it out here and we lose our Shaman token. Not blocking means I can make a treasure potentially and save myself two damage of Steam Vents. Although we may draw an untapped land with a second chapter. If I block Firebrand, they may have a Chain Whirler to finish off Shaman. And Ember Cleave would still kill our token, but then at least Ember Cleave would be on Firebrand instead of Robber. Which may be better for us. So maybe I do block Firebrand. There's the Ember Cleave. And we'll see where it goes. Alright, opponent puts it on the robber anyways. We're down to five. And I found an untapped land. So I can keep Shaman back on defense. Now it may actually be worth it to play Deputy and Exile the Robbers, because that also removes Ember Cleave from it. And without Firebrand, it's more difficult for the opponent to necessarily deal three damage. So, what does that mean for the rest of my hand? I can get rid of maybe Reunion and Omen, or maybe keep one of them to sacrifice to Incarnation. And I could see Steam Vents also getting discarded. Gergroth. I could even play Fi Attack with my Shaman. It's not guaranteed to survive against an Ember Cleave. So yeah, kind of like the Deputy now. And then the question is, do I attack to still play Omen? Or do we keep a Shaman back on defense that may be safer? Could have also gone for the Amber Cleave itself, but this seems better if it works. So if our opponent does have a Lightning Strike for Deputy, we can still at least block a Robber of the Rich with Shaman. Opponent had another one in hand. Lacks the lands to uh, necessarily equip. So I'm happy to trade for the Shaman. And Companion. Okay. Can't feel too comfortable at 5 life. So the safest play may be to Incarnation, Sacrifice Reflection, get Siege Rhino to immediately gain 3 life. And then next turn we can... Uh, Maybe get the Gergroth going, or sacrifice another incarnation to get a Kenrith, for instance, which can also gain more life. Or we could even get a Yorion to flicker Siege Rhino. So I think I like that. Reflection would have also been nice with a Siege Rhino in play, but that's not how this uh, works, sadly. So back up to 8. Got a 4-5 blocker now. Bone Crusher just going face. Okay, points on the burn plan. And another stomp. So we're at four. So I'm liking the plan of getting the life gain online as soon as possible. So I could play Omen to try and hit an untapped land. Although if I miss, it's a bit of a disaster. Could still play Companion and then get a three drop. And I guess Knight of Autumn could either destroy Amber Cleave or gain four. So it's not a complete disaster that way. And that may actually be better to get Knight of Autumn gain 4 and then flicker both Siege Rhino and the Knight. So, sure. Play Omen. And a Mimic can just copy Siege Rhino, so that works. So 
So gain another three. Can probably afford to attack with the first Rhino. End of turn, sacrifice Omen, get Knight of Autumn, gain another four. I think that beats any other options here. And then next turn I can play another Incarnation, get Yorion, flicker everything. So let's do that. Can probably afford to attack with the Siege Rhinos, but yeah, opponent has seen enough. They know we can tutor up a 5-drop now, and that's game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and this is definitely a mulligan. Don't often see hands that bad in best of one. This hand seems keepable. Fable into fires, let go of a blood mage, I think. Opponent on mono white aggro. Okay, so I guess I can afford to play Steam Vents tapped. Tapped Grove on two. And then we can curve Fable into fires, although Thalia is the worst case scenario. Omen, luckily, an answer to it, but won't be able to play it till next turn. And then we'll be taking a ton of damage in the meantime. There's also Initiate that can blow up artifacts or enchantments. So we've got our work cut out for us, and Adlin is also the best they could have here. So, got to play an untapped lands, so we can play Omen to kill Thalia. Guess we'll wait for them to attack, or do we do it now to play around a uh, potential Brave the Elements? Opponent could have a replacement Thalia is a concern if we Omen now. But I don't think I can beat Brave the Elements if they have it and we let them untap. And they're more likely to have Brave in hand than a second Thalia. So next turn, Fires plus Fable. Still has us taking a ton of damage. Probably enough for lethal. So this Yorion, Flickering, Omen and Fable is probably going to be too slow. Might have had a chance on the play, but yeah, the 1 2 3 curve with Thalia is probably going to be a bit too much for us to handle. And a Lieutenant as well. Great combo with Adlin. Bodyguard to protect Adlin, although most of our removal would exile it anyway. And I guess we're just dead here. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand isn't perfect. Far from it. Have a turn to Omen, turn 3 Deputy, so it's alright against aggro, but not even amazing. And then double fires is a bit redundant, so it's not doing us too many favors. I think I'm mulligan. This seems better. So our mana looks okay. And then... We can keep some of the early card draw to sacrifice the Incarnation, so maybe Gergroth goes. And what land to play first? Uh, don't want to play Proving Ground since then Fortress is still tapped. That's the one land it doesn't synergize with. Opponent Red Black. Epicure, so a sacrifice deck. One card we are not playing that we could include to improve that matchup is Yasharn, which can prevent the opponent from sacrificing stuff. For now, I think Nylia's presence over Companion. So our mana's perfect, can play one mana bindings. And we've got the fires plus incarnation combo set up for turn four. So hopefully no thought sees in the meantime. Anvil's fine. So we can go companion plus a tap proving ground. And then we should be able to answer a mayhem devil if that shows up. Which is probably their best play here. So, do I want to trade? Not really, since we want to keep our enchantments to go with Incarnation. Probably means they don't have Devil, otherwise we might have seen that before attacking. And which is often, do we see Cauldron Familiar? 
Not quite. Alright, so our opponent's got her two artifacts here. But for now, at least missing the big finishers like Cauldron Familiar and Mayhem Devil. So play our untapped land. Play Fires, play Incarnation. And I could start by getting a Knight of Autumn to destroy one of their artifacts. That seems okay. And then we still have Apparition as a more flexible answer in the deck. And given that they didn't have a Cauldron Familiar, I'm assuming Anvil is a scarier artifact. They can sacrifice it to itself. And then next turn we can get something to gain life back. Plenty of powerful 5 drops, including... We can just flicker with the Orion here. So don't necessarily want to trade when we can gain 4 with Knight or destroy another Witch's Oven. There's a Devil, so that's scary. So they can kill Knight of Autumn at instant speed. But we can play Fable and Yorion here, thanks to Fires. So that seems like the move. Now Devil also triggers off Incarnation. So that's a bit of a, a nombo here, I guess you could say. So I'm going to try and Flicker Knight, but I'm sure they're going to kill it in response. Alright. So Flicker those. And we get to draw. And what do we sacrifice with Incarnation here? can get a Siege Rhino to immediately gain 3. I could get an answer for Mayhem Devil, which is maybe the safest. Get a Skyclave Apparition, for instance. And then wait on sacrificing Fires to get a 5-drop. That seems fine. So your opponent gets another Mayhem Devil trigger here in a second. Alright, so we're at 8. Feeling relatively safe. And then next turn we should be able to get a powerful 5-drop like Kenrith with all our mana still untapped, and then that can take over. Alright, Massacre for 0 for extra damage here. So they're getting close, down to 5. Fatal Push kills Apparition. Yeah, with the Mayhem Devil in play, we probably would have died. Discard some lands. Can keep Proving Grounds to maybe cycle. Can play another Incarnation for what it's worth. And then maybe Companion for an extra blocker. Can grab a Kenrith, and then it's maybe worth it to play this untapped. So I can activate Kenrith twice to gain 10 life. And get another Incarnation out there. And I think we can start attacking with Yorion. So I get two Incarnation triggers. I'll go full control so we can gain some life end of turn if needed. Sacrifice Fires. And we can get Kenrith, plus maybe another 5-drop here. But our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. So yeah, Kenrith gaining 10 is an easy way to stabilize against any aggressive deck. And that's the power of Fires alongside Enigmatic Incarnation. So a pretty sweet deck once it gets going. Although it can be quite vulnerable, especially when on the draw, when facing some of the more aggressive decks in the format, like Mono Red, Mono White, especially if they have a turn to Thalia, which is quite backbreaking for our strategy. So once we get a card like Chain to the Rocks as another 1-mana enchantment removal spell, the deck might improve against aggro, could play 
portable hall as potentially a stand-in, although it's an artifact and not an enchantment, so it doesn't have the best synergy throughout the deck, and we're often playing a tap line on turn one anyways, so we might be better off playing a two-mana answer that has better synergy throughout the deck. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.